What's up everybody, I'm the Golden Otter and today I'm gonna show you how I got to Masters. So the first step, you see that 3 star Soraka and you get that screen right there. I mean I guess that's it. Let's just go ahead and end this video right now. Have a great one. Okay, okay, I will get straight into it. But there isn't one answer on how I got this rank. TFT is divided into different segments. Fundamentals, Meta, Set Knowledge and Calculations. And all of these areas need to be met in order for you to reach the higher ranks. But without a further ado, let's kick it off with the fundamentals. Let's talk about items. Items are basically the equivalent of HP. Let's say you want to slam a Ginsu's Saya, but you start off the game with just a bow and a cloak. So it's honestly better for you to just slam a Runans on Ezreal before you get that Saya comp ready because it will be able to save HP through the entire game instead of you just getting maybe a BIS Saya board but then you're at 10 HP and just dead and you go AF. I mean seems like a pretty easy choice to me obviously there's gonna be some exceptions to this rule but this rule often stands I mean you shouldn't build 8 Zephyrs uh, you know maybe your first item shouldn't be Shrouders ever. I mean, you get the drill. And another thing with items that I think really help is that you have some kind of direction of where you're gonna go with the item. Let's say you start off the game with a uh, Bloodthirster. Then perhaps you can go Shiyu or perhaps you can go Graves. You know, stuff like that basically. And the last thing to note of items are that. Some items are just universally good to always slam. Like, uh, let's say, Giant Slayer, since it gives both AD and AP damage. So you're not locked into one comp. Or maybe a CC rot. And uh, also keep in mind that some items work together very nicely. Such as Bloodthirster and Warmogs, for instance. Since Bloodthirster gives a health percentage shield. So when you get that Warmogs, you're gonna get that big shield very nice okay time for a pop quiz you have eight dragon mancers and you got the ao shin with the buff so what item do you want a a ul gauntlet or a giant slayer or do you want a death cap or archangels okay time's up i'm just gonna say giant slayer is gonna be better than perhaps a death cap because we got that damage multiplication since you already have that high AP you want to increase that instead of just giving more AP so when you get that straight percentage from Giant Slayer it's actually gonna be a bigger multiplication and now to the strongest board every turn in TFT you get the chance to make your board as strong as possible and to save that HP because TFT basically is not about going first place I mean sometimes obviously it is but it's mostly about staying alive as long as possible to get a higher placement each game. So don't go chasing traits thinking that's the entire board strength. Often my strongest board ironically are just comps where I hit a lot of 2 stars in the early game with barely any traits. I just got 2 stars, I mean <laughs> they're gonna be stronger than 1 stars even if they have traits so don't get baited by that. And the same rule applies in the late game. Imagine filling your board with uh, dragons, legendaries, or just going uh, full mages with a bunch of random one costs. Just compare a Vladimir to a Yasuo. You get the drill. High cost units are usually better than low cost. It is as basic as that. So, what about leveling? I will start off with an example. You know, before the first fight, you're level 3 and let's say you have a bunch of pairs on one hand you want to level up so you are strong and you can win that fight but on the other if you just stay level 3 you have a bigger chance of hitting that upgrade so in this case it's actually better to just don't level up attack that first round and then you have the chance to hit your upgrade and just have a broad knowledge of when to roll at what levels 
for instance, if you play Saya, you need to be 8 most of the time, since there's the biggest chance of hitting Saya at that level. And the same rule applies when you're playing that one cost comp. You just build that econ slowly up. You don't level up because you want to keep that money. And when you're above 50 gold, you just roll it down to hit that upgrade. And another point, which I think uh, I kind of overdo. I mean, it's really fun though. You just go completely psychopath mode uh, when you're win streaking and you just <laughs> spend all your gold and level up. Okay, and so don't do that, but you get the idea. Let's say you have a five win streak, you get a lot of econ from that. So then it could be worth it to level up to keep the win streak and get money from that. You just know if you lose, <laughs> I don't know, you just throw your PC out the window or something, and you're fucked. And about econ, what I did when I started playing TFT, I started in set uh, six. I usually just played a lot of level 8 comps since uh, I learned how to econ that way. Which is a strat I really recommend if you wanna be better at the game. Just learning how to cross that next econ fresh or when you should stay below and try to keep that pairs. Just have a broad knowledge of it. For instance, let's say you high roll and hit a dragon or you hit a high cost unit. You need to think, is this worth holding for me losing econ, or should I sell it? Because, yeah, there's nice to hit a high unit. But, if you hold a unit that you're not even sure you're gonna play, it's gonna cost you a lot of gold. Not the gold for holding the unit, but let's say, okay, you buy a Lee Sin, he costs 3. But, now you can't get 20, so you lose another econ. And then another from next round. So basically you lose maybe 6 gold. By just buying a unit of 3 gold. So keep that in mind. But on the other hand. I mean if you use high roll a Thaya or Graves. When you're playing one of those comps. You should hold it obviously. But there are some exceptions. You just need to realize when this rule applies. And when you should sell it. So what about scouting and positioning? It's easy to think you just need to play frontline, backline in TFT, but it's a bit more complicated than that. Let's take this matchup for instance. Since the enemy has a Lux, we want to spread out our units so we avoid getting hit by that devastating Q. Or let's take this scenario. You're against a bunch of assassins, then you need to clump your units together to save your carry. Okay, let's take a last scenario. Let's say you're loose streaking and you're very weak, but you're at least trying to preserve some HP. Then put your units diagonally and make sure they all target the same unit. This way you have the biggest chance of at least killing one unit and saving 2 HP. Okay, about augments. I'm gonna show you my way, it's a bit boring, but at least you're gonna get that LP, I mean, then you will be happy. So here, just look out the win rate of augments. I mean, stats don't lie. No kia. Imagine if you looked up a win rate on two augments. One is 3%, one is 6 I mean, obviously, there's a bigger chance of the higher win rate augment to be better. Some uh, parts of the game are just unbalanced, and you need to acknowledge this. For instance, some augments in this set that have been really cracked are Knife's Edge. Or Celestial Blessing is always nice. I recommend the site Meta TFT for checking up these win rates. I will link this in the bio for you. Obviously, don't solely rely on win rates. You need to adapt your game. Some games, maybe a really low win rate augment is still gonna be very good since it suits your comps. But it is a good info to know whether an augment is good or bad. Another recommendation is to be mindful of econ augments since you lose a lot of board strength. Imagine you're in a prismatic lobby. There's a guy that takes knife's edge. He gets a 40 flat AD. Meanwhile, you have golden ticket. You're just gonna get rolled and lose a lot of HP. 
But obviously there's gonna be exceptions where econ arguments are good. Just be mindful of this. Another thing is just thinking of what arguments suits the game best. Let's take Celestial Blessing and fill up the hunt. Celestial Blessing, it has a percentage healing. So it's better in the late game because there are gonna be bigger numbers. Meanwhile, fill up the hunt gives a flat HP healing. So that's gonna be better in the early game. So just be mindful of stuff like that. Okay, let's get over to some general tips. Mental. Duh. I mean, but it's important. It might seem obvious, but it's true. Look at all the pro players. Take Faker. I mean, he's not a TFT player, but who cares? He's just so calm. You can see him 1v5ing people <laughs> while playing chess or something, where he goes uh, 0 20 and uh, he doesn't care. And you should have this mindset to yourself. If you are tilted, I mean, just go touch grass or something. I don't know. And TFT is meant to be fun, so if you don't enjoy the game, take a break rather than going on a rage queue and listening to hard rock while losing all your AP and all that LP you grinded for. Another thing, if you can uh, view your losses without your emotions clouding your vision, you can also admit the mistakes you make and learn and improve from them, rather than just saying FF and blaming Mortog. And another thing is learning versus climbing. Why does a young chess player beat the old master? The youngling has a book of everything the old chess player has learned throughout all the hard work and years of work. Meanwhile, the youngling just opens the book and copies what the old player has done. The same concept applies to TFT. Why learn all yourself and go through all that trial and error when you can just watch pro players and learn from them? Work smarter, not harder. Big brain move, guys. Then you can start climbing and getting that LP when you have learned all these things rather than just inting your games and raging. <laughs> I'm gonna keep this a bit brief. Let's talk about the patches. TFT changes each patch, so there's bound to be certain comps that are better or worse than others. It's impossible to have TFT a completely balanced game since it's so complex. So just keep up to date on what comps are good and you can get ahead on a certain comp and just abuse it. I mean just look at Dragomancer Nunu. <laughs> that shit was crazy. Yeah. If you just knew that from the beginning, you would be able to spam that and get some free wins. And I could start doing patch rundowns for you guys if you want it. Otherwise, I would recommend the Mobalytics app or any of these apps or videos. Maskoff makes very nice guides, so check that out. So, this is just what I learned by climbing to Masters. Obviously, there's a lot of different stuff and this isn't everything I just thought that I was gonna share some stuff i learned but anyhow if you liked the video you know what to do press that like button and if you made it this far into the video thank you guys so much for watching and i make tft content just like this video or normal gameplay so if that interests you you know what to do be sure to subscribe anyhow have a great one everybody ciao